Good morning, y'all. This is Michelle with Southern Shell Creates, and I wanted to bring to you a, another project today. And I'm going to be doing some um, Mod Podge, some decoupage onto a glass bottle. Um, my husband is uh, very much, he loves to fish and he loves the he loves the lake the ocean um, and my home is a very much a farmhouse chic and I do have one wall above our aquarium that has his um, his ships and you know uh, anchors or anything like that and so one of the things I wanted to do for him is um, just to add a little bit here and there um, into our decor uh, for something that he would enjoy. So I'm going to start out small. Um, and the reason I am not going to paint this bottle, normally if you're going to decoupage napkins onto a bottle, you would paint that bottle um, a white color. But because I want the distressed dark coloring, um, I'm going to leave the bottle in its original amber color. I found these napkins and I found them, I believe it was at Ollie's because we don't have a Tuesday morning around here. Um, so I'm, it's a three ply napkin and when you get your napkins and you, um, you open them, you want to separate them into where you only have the one ply. Now I just dampened my fingertips and pulled that back ply off, but these are three ply napkins. And so I have taken the one ply off of it and I'm struggling with that second ply. All right, well, would you look at that? I took a piece of packing tape Put it on the back side of that napkin and very gently I'm going to separate these two so that I have the single ply to go down on my bottle. Now the first back side came off real easy but the middle piece did not so there's one middle piece so let's let me show you what I did here. So here's the front of the napkin, and this was the center of the napkin because I already took off the one, uh, the, the inside of it. I'm gonna go ahead and separate one more. I don't think I will need it for this small bottle, but just in case. And now you can see the difference in the colors. So with, with napkin decoupage, it's, these napkins can be very, um, they're very fragile. So you want to be easy as you're putting these on, on together. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use this line here on the faux wood on this napkin. And I'm going to cut this napkin right there. And that's going to give me a, a point, a starting point, and an ending point for both, for both napkins. Now, usually this is easier to do if all of your plies are still on there. So there's one. And here's our second one. And this one's not quite the same, so let's look at this one. This one, yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and trim this one up. We were talking the other evening about how fun it would be to live on a boat. But as you guys have seen in my craft room, I have a little bit of a craft, well, a crafting issue. 
I don't think all of my stuff would fit um, into a tiny living space because that's basically what living on a boat would be like. Would be like living in a in one of those tiny homes. I am definitely not a minimalist when it comes to my craft supplies, I guess, or or lifestyle for that for that point. Um, I just put a generous amount of Mod Podge. And I am going to use this napkin holder and I'm going to lean my bottle up. Well, that didn't work the way I had anticipated. Let's do it this way. <laughs> and I'm going to take my napkin and lay it at the bottom. And very gently. I'm just tapping it down in the center. And try not to rub because you will tear and tear these napkins. So I'm just tapping. I'm just tapping out any little air bubbles from the center out. The center out. Here we go. And then I'm going to come around and it looks like this side has enough Mod Podge on it. Look at there. All right. Let me put a little bit under this napkin area here so I can have it all down. And then I'm just going to come in with my brush very gently. Very gently. And I'm just dabbing right over the top of that just to get that Mod Podge, a nice little coat on the top of this napkin to get it sealed in there. Now, there are so many people out there that do Mod Podge and do napkin Mod Podge. And, you know, I have to find what works for me. And yes, I don't, um, yes, I, I get my fingers messy sometimes. I just use my fingertips um, just to get it get it all in there where I need it to be. Um, some people will use saran wrap and I've, I've done that as well. Um, I've done this this brush um, and I don't get the brush strokes. I don't get the air bubbles. Um, I don't rip my napkin. This works for me. It may not work for somebody else, and that's okay. This way, I don't have the problems that I would run into when I was trying to do um, a different technique. And that's, those techniques are fine. Those may work great for you. They did not work great for me. I had to find how, let's see how my hands work, um, what works for me. I tend to twitch and shake. So if I'm already dabbing, if I twitch, it's not really gonna matter. If I'm shaking, it's not really gonna matter. If I'm trying to very gently smooth something on and I do something like that, I am going to tear my project. And I, I work too hard um, perfecting and it's terrible because I do tend to try to make perfection out of a craft. And you know, honey, it's when we're crafting and it's handmade, you're not gonna get perfection. 
but I still want perfection. I want it to be perfect. If somebody is wanting to purchase something, they're gonna want it as perfect as possible. Um, and I just, I want to make sure that I have done my all to give them the product they deserve. So, that being said, I do what is comfortable for me because I know it works for me. There may be an easier way to do it. There may be a right or wrong. This works for me. <laughs> so what may be right or wrong for um, a professional out there may not be a right or a wrong for me. It's definitely, I don't know. I don't, I don't know exactly how to put it, but I have to do what works for me. And you need to do what works for you. So, try different methods. There could be something that works easier for you because of the products that you use or what you have on hand. Um, there may be products out there that work amazing doing this, but I don't own them. And I'm, I really don't wanna to have to go out and buy more merchandise. And my husband surely doesn't want me to have to go out and buy more merchandise. So if I can get in and get my project, projects done using what I have on hand, so be it. And this is now on there and I'm gonna go ahead and put another coat on top of this napkin. Going around the edges again, making sure that it's gonna be down. There we go. The fun thing is I can make a set of these and put on our bar um, or stack them up around our aquarium. Um, it just to know that, you know, I do think about him in our decor and I do appreciate all he does for our family and all he puts up with. Um, with my own inadequacies. Oh, he's just a wonderful man, I'm so grateful. Um, so, you know, this is not my first rodeo and it's not his first rodeo. And, you know, we all have come with a little bit of inadequacies and I am just so blessed and honored that he, he takes me and he honors me. Um, I just, I can't thank, thank the Lord enough for, for giving me Joe. Um, thank you, baby. I love you. So that being said, <laughs> I do try to make sure that I think about him when I'm doing what I, I love to do and, and it's because of him that I can do what I love to do. Um, he doesn't try to change who I am um, and I don't want to change who he is. So, all right. So I've got this on here and I'm going to let this dry and then we will come back and I will show you what we're gonna do with this once it is dry. All right, my dear friends, I am back. And here is um, the small bottle for Joe at this point in time. And because we didn't paint, because I wanted that dark, distressed look on this particular bottle. Um, you really can't see how the anchor is on there. So I went ahead and I took another 
um, the, one of the extra pieces of napkin and tore around the anchor and I want to go ahead and put this on top where that other anchor is and then use the extra pieces of napkin to go ahead and decorate the top of the bottle with the Mod Podge and the napkin. Start at the top. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that Mod Podge on the top and where that those anchor arms come out. So now what I can do is I can line up the bottom perfectly and come right on up and know that I have aligned that perfect. Bring it back down. There's the bottom. Go ahead and lay that down. Dab that on. Now I can come on down and do the bottom half. dab that on top. Make sure I didn't mess that up by laying that down there. And because this is right where the other the other napkin is, all it's doing is highlighting the white just a little bit more. It's not going to do, um, it's not going to make it any bolder. You'll be able to see it, but it's only giving it a little bit more of that um, brilliance behind it. I didn't want a whole lot of brilliance behind it, the rest of the bottle. So, now I'm just going to take the leftover pieces of that napkin and I'm just tearing some of them. And I am going to work my way around the neck of this bottle and put little pieces of the napkin on here and mod podge this down. I remember as a kid doing stuff very similar, paper mache. If any of you remember doing like a paper mache as a kid, um, let me know. What was your favorite part about it? Or did you not like it? Because as kids, um, you know, we used our hands. We got messy. Um, some, some kids don't like getting messy. Some adults don't like getting messy. Um, I get into my crafting. Maybe that's part of my therapy. I don't know. Um, just getting in there and um, moving along and getting your fingers all gooey and um, oh my goodness. And with the Mod Podge, what what's fun is once it dries, you can peel that off, peel that off like a like a sunburn. Oh my goodness. I know. Yuck trying to um, do my video with natural light, so I apologize. We do have a storm coming in, um, and so the light is um, getting bright and going dark and getting bright and going dark, so I do apologize. Um, it, it, the filming does so much better with the natural light <clears throat> behind me. I don't have a great big beautiful studio. Um, you guys have seen my my craft room and um, a lot of times, well right now we're in the process of doing some changes and so I do um, my filming right now out in the living room 
um, I have a, a TV tray set up and um, on top of that TV tray I have an old whiteboard that is usually what you see me um, working on. But today I went ahead and I took some contact paper from Dollar Tree and I put that over the white surface because that's all you guys seen and sometimes it's really hard for you to see what I'm working on if I'm using something white and the background's white and then it gets bright from the sunshine. So I'm like, well, you know what? Um, let's just put some contact paper on here and see what happens. Now with this particular bottle, I'm not sure because it has so many of the same colors that is in that contact paper. So it's hard telling how this is gonna turn out, but we'll see. We will see. So almost done here. And then I will be able to set this aside and let it finish drying. And then you'll be able to see how I'm going to decorate this particular bottle for my Joe. If you are not on medications, count your blessings. Um, I, I think it's wonderful that, that the Lord has just provided an out for us that are on meds. You know, that there is a, a way to control some of the, the um, issues that we deal with, um, whether it be uh, thyroid or heart or, or whatever. Um, just thank the Lord that he has given us a way. It's one of the things I shared with a friend of mine. It, it does not matter whatever situation you are in. Um, God will give you a way out of it. You just have to be willing to take it. Um, and I'm, st I'm still learning that. I am still learning that on a big time. So I'm just grateful that sometimes when we share with others, that's that particular thing we're sharing is actually meant for us as well. So, all right. This bottle is now got its uh, the rest of its coating on here. I'm gonna go ahead and put the second coat on the bottom just to make sure, and then that will give it a nice, nice, sturdy seal. And then. We will be back to finish the decoration on this amber nautical bottle. All right, I'll see you guys in a few. All righty, so for the old nautical piratey bottle, you remember we went ahead and put one more um, piece of the napkin so that that anchor would be able to show better. So here is that and it is nice and dry. It is sealed real well and so I'm like okay what am I going to do with this? I wanted um, it to be very piratey um, because it is knocked back a little bit and I found the um, I found this wood piece. I have a, a lot of little wood pieces, different words, um, little pieces, months, dates, uh, and I found this one. And I went ahead and used some um, folk art home decor wax. And I um, yeah, this is the antique, and so I went ahead and put it on there and and buffed it, buffed it out, so that this is now ready to be written on 
and um, I'm going to go ahead and put something on there. I was thinking, okay, pirates do rum, um, but I, I don't know if I necessarily want rum on there or not. It might just be um, maybe maybe put rum on there and then hang it from the nautical twine. The twine. I'm going to take the twine and, and wrap it around. Um, I'm going to do a couple wraps on. No, I don't think I'm going to do a couple wraps on the bottom because that anchor goes down. But I am going to do um, around the um, mouth of the bottle. So I am going to get that done. And um, in order to it, what I do with that, you can get this twine from the Dollar Tree. This actually came in my um, Tonic Studio kit. So this is actually um, my Tonic Studio. I believe it's Tim Holtz. So it is um, not your Dollar Twee. Twi it's not your Dollar Twee fine. Um, Dollar Tree twine. Wow. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to just give it a little knot around the mouth of this bottle. And then I'm going to take the hot glue before I tie that real tight and I'm going to put a little dollop of hot glue right there and tight it goes. Now all I'm going to do is it's going to go around the bottle, the, the mouth here. I'm going to leave that little piece out here so I'll have something I can bring up and tie on when I'm done. Because I want it to be a little rough it is pirate after all this can he has um, a pirate ship look at I got it all tangled up there um, I got him a pirate ship to go up with his others at one point so this will be a nice little um, piece to go in on that and this is just going to be you know just rough around the edges here and as I come up around the mouth I'm gonna need um, need to glue some of that down so it stays oh, there goes my glue gun again and that's because I'm trying to stand it up on the left side when I'm right-handed so you know make crafting easier on yourself guys if you're right-handed put your glue gun on the right side <laughs> don't battle with it you know it's what is what is that old saying that's not the hill i want to die on i'm sure i know that's not the verbiage but uh for me that's the hill i don't want to die on is fighting with my glue gun it's not an issue fix it it's easy my goodness all right so i've got that top where it'll stay and i'm just gonna come on down and make this a little more out of the oomph so it looks a little bit more raggedy let's unroll it there okay and I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off and tie it I want enough to put my tag on there Once again, a dollop will do ya. Get that on there. All right, so that's on there nice and tight. So, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and go on through one side, up and out through the other. And then go ahead and pull it on in. And I'm thinking I, I may just want it to hang. instead of instead of having it having it tight 
think I may just do that. Just get it on through there and knot it off and then put something right on there. I think I'll do that. So what I'm gonna do, you guys can't, you're not hearing my brain talk. I'll do that to Joe all the time. I'll be thinking something and then I'll just come right out and finish the sentence and he's like, huh? <laughs> it's like, you're supposed to be reading my mind. Did you not hear what I was thinking? <laughs> do any of you guys do that? I mean, I've done that to my kids. I've done that to friends, um, of course, to Joe. And it's, it's just funny. I have this conversation going on in my head and I'll just bring them in on the conversation right in the middle of it. So, all right, let me go ahead and cut that off real quick because I've, messed with it so much I've created an ugly end there we go I'll pull that through and then I'm just gonna kind of wrap it around the back here and make it a little knot and then secure it with some hot glue and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put some verbiage on there um, Gotta get my cre creative mind thinking. 